Jimmy Thing from Maximum PC here at GDC 2015. I'm here at uh, Stardock's booth speaking with Adam. And uh, Adam, can you tell us what we're looking at back here? This is Ashes of the Singularity, which is the first game from Oxide Games and Stardock. It is, well, it's not the first game from Stardock. It is a large scale RTS that we are trying to redefine what people think of as a large strategy game. So, this is the first game using the Nitrous Engine. And as you can see, we have tons and tons of units on screen. This map, this demo map that we have right here, has over 5,500 units by itself, and this is the smallest map size that we're going to ship with. So this is, Ashes of the Singularity is only going to get bigger from here. What allows us to make this game is what Oxide has done with the Nitrous Engine. There's two sides of the coin. There's the rendering and then the gameplay side. Oxide has figured out some secret sauce with the Nitrous Engine that allows them to extremely efficiently thread out both the rendering and the gameplay calculations so that we can make a game that can not only display thousands of units, but can make playing with those thousands of units fun. Yeah. And as you, as you guys mentioned, you're using the, the Oxide engine. And here we have uh, you know, Tim Kip from, uh, um, from Oxide, Oxide Games. Uh, can you sort of tell us a little bit about the engine? I know that you guys first sort of uh, came on the radar you know, uh, with, uh, with Mantle and things like that. And you guys are also supporting DX12. Yes. Now, is that right? Um, yeah, so the Nitrous Engine has been ported to DirectX 12. We've been heavily <laughs> invested in all next-gen APIs. So we started with Mantle. Uh, we've been integrated with DirectX 12 in that development, and now we're also uh, a member of the Kronos Group. So we're working with uh, Vulkan to make sure that that API as well is a top uh, world-class API. Okay, and uh, just like on, on that note, you know, considering that you know DX12 is pretty much uh, it's pretty much here, and then you know Mantle's been out for some time. There was some talk earlier that um, AMD wants developers to focus on DX12, uh, but then there's also talk of this new uh, uh, Vulkan uh, API as well. Can you talk about what the fate of Mantle is? Um, so Mantle will never truly go away. I'm not sure what I can <coughs> say about who's going to have access to it, but Mantle Mantle's not going away. However, the main focus is going to be on what people expect to be the best customer forward experience, and that's going to be on DirectX 12, and that's also going to be on Vulkan. Okay, uh, can you tell uh, talk to us a little bit about Vulkan? Um, you know, it's a, it's a pretty new API, I believe. It's, it's a, a very new API, yes. <laughs> okay. And there's not a lot that we're actually talking about at this time, other than everyone is uh, focused on making sure that. Um, yeah, we haven't really. <laughs> okay, is, is, is it, is it I'm the. I'm not sure what I can say. No, can I, can I, can I'm can sorry. I ask? To, to be totally honest with you, um, and you can cut this up however you want, yeah. we can only talk about what we're doing with these technologies. We can't really comment on what other Right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, you, you guys are doing really interesting things with the the CPU. So the, the game yes. seems quite CPU intensive. Um, you know. You know, because you're you're controlling essentially thousands of units. Uh, you're mentioning off the off camera that you guys are doing some unique things with the scheduler, the CPU scheduler. Can you talk about that? Uh, yes. Yeah. So when we first designed Nitrous, one of the things that we wanted to make sure was that um, if there was power, if there was compute left in your PC, we were going to try and use it as efficiently as possible and find a way to do that. So the scheduler that we developed uh, very early on was designed to basically create the finest grain tasks possible with the minimal amount of overhead. And because we can do that, we can effectively chop up large tasks very efficiently with many, many smaller tasks. We can distribute them to as many cores as are available at a time and have them execute without anybody having to serialize and wait on anyone else's given task. Okay, and, and basically you said you can also, you know, you, you alluded to the fact that Windows, you know, when you're playing a game, it's not, you're not using all the cores just for that game. Windows is doing some exactly. stuff behind the One scenes. One of the challenges of uh, developing on a PC <clears throat> is that Windows is using your CPU for, you know, the CPU is a shared resource. So when you're on the PC, if you've got Skype running, if you've got, uh, you know, your web browser up at the same time, and there's a ton of different web services underneath, all of those OS services are always, they're also looking to get uh, CPU time. So one of the things that's important to design for is making sure that your scheduler can accommodate the Windows OS and all of the other services that are running underneath of it so you can still efficiently go ahead and get your CPU tasks scheduled and done. Cool. And then, and like, will what kind of CPU will will users uh, need to play this game effectively? Um, at uh, at Oxide, what we really like to do is make sure that people that have high-end machines always see some sort of a benefit. So we've built a lot of stuff in here so that you know the higher end of your PC, 
the more knobs you can turn up to get better, uh, to get better sort of visual quality and, and more interesting uh, effects and those sorts of things. Uh, we've also designed it so you can scale it all the way down. So at this point, we officially support uh, quad core machines, but it's all it's been tested all the way down on uh, three and two core systems. Yeah, currently you guys are running it on a Kaveri uh, AMD CPU. Yes, uh, we've, we've right? run it on a Kaveri before with a 290, and the two, and we're still GPU bound on the 290. Okay, cool. Is there anything else that you guys want uh, users to know about the game or the engine? We're just really excited to finally be able to show people what we're really doing with Nitrous and what Nitrous is capable of. And uh, we look forward to people being able to get in and, and buy into early access this summer. And uh, we're going to release this game this winter, and, and it's going to be great. I think it's important to note that all of the we love talking about technology, we love building technology, uh, but at the same time, the reason that we've built this technology is to try and support a game like this. So, uh, you know, when we talk about uh, multi-core rendering and when we talk about multi-core AI, the reason why those things are important to us is because we can actually make a better game with it. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jimmy.